Welcome to St. Andrew's Church in Happy Valley Goose Bay as we worship by video. We are so happy that you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together. The house of God is such a special place to worship and we are living in a challenging time but we thank God that we can still worship and journey together from our homes. God bless us all today as we worship. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The presence of the light reminds us of Jesus' coming into our world and into our lives as we worship. Please join in singing, There is a Redeemer. Remember this, God is always generous, and God is always fair. We will remember. Remember this, God will give us more than we deserve. We will remember. Remember this, God will give others more than they deserve. We will remember. Let us worship God who is loving, generous, and fair. And we'll say our opening prayer together. O oh God, we gather in this sacred circle to sing your praises and to give you thanks for our world, filled with good things. Open us to those around us and to your word that our worship may honor you, and we can truly claim that we are your people. Amen. Amen. And our prayer of confession and pardon. 
Sometimes, like the Hebrew people, we are scared to move on, afraid to trust that God will be with us wherever we go. Forgive and us, feed us, us, and heal us, us, O God. Sometimes we get frustrated and complain about things, often taking out our anger on people around us who don't deserve it. Forgive us, feed us, us and heal us, O God. Sometimes we are dissatisfied with what we have. We want more, and we complain, whine, and become greedy. Forgive us, us feed us, us, and heal us, O God. Sometimes we are ungrateful, forgetting to give thanks to you and to each other for so many wonderful gifts, large and small. Forgive us, feed us, and heal us, O God. Hear us as we pray in silence, O God, confessing our faults and asking for your forgiveness. Forgive us, feed us, and heal us, O God. And our words of assurance, over and over, the Bible reminds us that you are merciful, loving, and forgiving. God, let us be assured that you love us, and let us live as forgiven people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen.
Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this <coughs> wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat, in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading of Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among his people. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He led out his people with silver and gold, and in all their tribes there was not one that stumbled. Egypt was glad that they were going, because they were afraid of them. He spread out a cloud for a covering, and a fire to give light in the night season. They asked, and quails appeared, and he satisfied them with bread from heaven. He opened the rock, and water flowed, so the river ran in the dry places. For God remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he led forth his people with gladness, his chosen with shouts of joy. He gave his people the lands of the nations, and they took the fruit of others' toil that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing all things bright and beautiful.
to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in the manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you, or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he sent out again, about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, Go also into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you gave and you made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to those last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So. The last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please join in singing, Peace is flowing like a river.
speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First, the sermon shuffle. An old man was on his deathbed and wanted to be buried with his money. He called his priest, his doctor, and his lawyer to his bedside. The old man said, In each of these three envelopes is $30,000 cash. I'm giving one envelope to each of you, and I'm trusting you to put your envelope in my coffin when I die. That way, I can take all my money with me. At the funeral, the priest, the doctor, and the lawyer each put an envelope in the coffin. Riding away in a limousine afterwards, the priest suddenly broke into tears and confessed, I only put $20,000 into the envelope because I needed $10,000 to repair the roof of the church. Well, the doctor said, since we are confiding in each other, I only put $10,000 in the envelope because we needed a new x-ray machine for the children's ward in the hospital, and we were $20,000 short. The lawyer was aghast. I'm ashamed of both of you, he exclaimed. I want it known that when I put my envelope in the coffin, I enclosed a check for the full $30,000. <laughs> Many years later, the lawyer himself died and went to heaven. St. Peter escorted him past mansion after dazzling mansion until they came to a dilapidated shack at the end of the street. The lawyer was stunned and said, St. Peter, why am I stuck with a run-down shack when all these other people have mansions? Well, sir, replied St. Peter, we did the very best we could with the money you sent us. <laughs> <laughs> what is heaven like? I once attended a funeral many years ago where the preacher told me in no uncertain time terms what heaven was like. He drew his inspiration from the book of Revelation where things are actually said about how long heaven is, how wide, how high. And I found his, his description interesting. But I also found that there are more important things to be said about heaven than how, how wide it is. And the most important things about heaven have been told us by Jesus. And Jesus hardly ever refers to heaven in physical terms, but talks about heaven in terms of relationships. And we see right away that very different relationships exist in heaven. Today's Gospel is one of the Lord, our Lord's parables of the Kingdom. One of those stories that begin with the words, the kingdom of heaven is like. This particular parable or story talks about several groups of workers in a vineyard or a grape farm. One group of workers worked 12 hours in the vineyard, and this group of workers had a contract with their employer. Each of them was to receive a denarius, which was the average daily wage in their own world. Other groups of workers were hired on later in the day. One group worked nine hours, another six hours, another three hours, and still another group was hired on just one hour before quitting time. None of these people who were hired on later in the day knew what wages they would be getting at the end of the day. They did not have a contract. They were simply told that whatever was right, that's what they would be given. And at the end of the day, what was right turned out to be a denarius, a day's wages, a whole day's wages for working three quarters of a day, or half a day, or a quarter of a day, or even for just one hour. At the end of the day, they all got the same. And the guys with the contract, the guys who had actually agreed to a full day's wage for a full day's work, well, they grumbled. These guys felt that they should have received more and this parable tells us, as clearly as can be, that everyone stands on an equal footing in the kingdom of heaven. Here on earth, some people are always finishing first, and other people are always coming up last. But there's no more first or last in the kingdom of heaven. For the last will be the same as the first, 
and the first will be the same as the last. There will be no more coming before or coming behind, no more serving or being served. In the kingdom of heaven, everybody will be really and truly equal. I suspect that we all of us accept this notion to a certain extent. We all accept that there will be equal places in the kingdom of heaven for black people, white people and brown people, for native people and non-native people. And we accept that there will be equal places in the kingdom of heaven for French speakers and English speakers and speakers of every other language. What we find hard to accept is the possibility that there will be equal places in the kingdom of heaven for those who turn to God on their deathbeds, just as much as for those who have been turning to God all their lives. I could go to church every week of my life for 90 years, and so I should. And somebody else might never go to church for 90 years, and then finally become aware of what they've been missing, and turn to the Lord in the 11th hour of their life. And that person, and you, and I, will stand on an equal footing in the kingdom of heaven. And I might say, that other person has not deserved their place in the kingdom of heaven. I might grumble at God, like some of the workers in the vineyard. I might even say to God, that person does not deserve a place in the kingdom of heaven. And God would say to me, that's right. That person does not deserve their place in the kingdom of heaven. But neither do you deserve your place in the kingdom of heaven. If places in the kingdom of heaven are assigned to those who deserve them, nobody would ever get a place. We cannot earn a place in the kingdom of heaven. We will never deserve a place in the kingdom of heaven. But God will give us a place, unearned, undeserved, and all we have to do is turn to Him, recognizing that we are all sinners, recognizing that we would never get there on our own. You know, those of us who have had the privilege of knowing the Lord, the Lord Jesus, all our lives, the privilege of knowing Him, the, the opportunity to serve Him, that may have been missing from the life of a person who has come to know the Lord only just before their death. But when we come to die, the privileges that we have enjoyed as lifelong Christians will be laid aside along with every other distinction of wealth, or health, or wisdom, or status. And the last ones to know Jesus will be just like those who knew him first. A few years ago, there came out a popular song which contains the line, Heaven is a place on earth. And I want to suggest to you this morning as my final point, that there is an element of truth in those words. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is among you. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Eternal life does not begin when we die. Eternal life for you and me has already begun. The absolute equality that prevails in God's kingdom does not exist in this world for an awful lot of people. But God really does expect us to put some effort into making this world a more equitable place, where male and female, black and white, native and non-native, will receive fair and equal treatment from one another, in the home, in the school, in the workplace. Jesus taught us to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We must say those words and pray those words, but we must also do our part to make those words a reality for all the disadvantaged people of this world. We really must try to make this world, their world, our world, a whole lot more like the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen.
us pray together. God, we, we love, love you and we thank you for giving us so many gifts. Thank, thank you for your Holy Spirit, Spirit who lives, lives inside us, the Spirit that gives us life. We thank you for the Church and for making us a part of it. Amen. God has blessed our lives and relationships, joy, inspiring and challenging. In response to God's blessings in our lives, we are now invited to share our offering. Please join in singing. We'll sing in the morning.
that they may experience God's presence with them today and recognize someone's love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are working to aid those in need, particularly firefighters and rescue workers, that God will give them strength and wisdom and protection from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For greater stewardship of creation, that God will impel our hearts to oppose the misuse of Earth's resources and empower us to work tirelessly to protect the to protect the magnificence of nature for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask God's blessing and healing on all who are in need of prayer this day. For all who are ill, Joe Tremblant, Mabel Russell, Phyllis Hederson, Kim Simmons, and those with COVID-19. And anyone you would like to name aloud or in the silence of your hearts. Lloyd Shepherd. Charlie Williams. Andrea Lindsay. That the Lord will bring an end to the coronavirus and give hope, healing, and new life to those who are sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, we pray for the family and friends of Kai Woodward and those who have died from COVID-19. That they may experience the fullness of life in Christ and live in God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now take this time to offer up our own private prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as our Savior taught us to pray, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this us day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. In our church news for this week, your weekly givings can be sent to your church uh, through your envelopes or post dated checks to St. Andrew's Church, P.O. Box 130, Station B. Or we can set up electronic givings for you. You can just call me for information. Or you can EMT your givings to Paris of Lake Melville at gmail.com. And I want to thank you for supporting your church at this time of COVID-19. St. Andrew's Church will open for in-person worship on October the 4th at 11 a.m. 
Because of COVID-19 rules and regulations, there will only be one service per Sunday. There has to be extensive cleaning after each service. Therefore, there won't be enough time for two morning services. In the meantime, we will continue to share our video with you. Next Sunday, 17th after Pentecost, September 27th at 11 a.m., please join us at St. Andrew's Church for worship by video. And I want to thank you for joining us for worship today. We were so blessed and honored that you chose to worship with us. We pray that our time of worshiping God together was a blessing and time of fulfillment for you. It's always a joy to worship God, but in these times of COVID-19, where everything is so different, we continue to give God thanks that we can continue to minister and reach people for him in this new way. In our closing hymn today, I stand amazed in the presence. <laughs> 